Hello there everybody, this is Solar Flare 95 back once again with another installment of the Soul Calibur 6 Vocal Library series, a series in which I attempt to read for you all the lore in the museum. So without further ado, let's begin. Kunpetku Temple, Serpentine Banquet. The malevolent cult, Beagle Sestimus, was headquartered in a grand sanctuary where throngs of the faithful worshipped Palgaia, the executioner. However, when Kunpetku became the Grand High Priest, he ordered an entirely new temple constructed underground to be the cult's new center of worship. The size and grandeur of the cult's new head temple is awe-inspiring, yet it's still pales in comparison to the original with its thousand year history. However, it also easily overshadows the many other temples and shrines the cult has dotted across the world. More remarkable is how the cult was able to assemble the manpower and materials required to build this enormous new subterranean sanctuary. It is clear just how much influence and power Kunpetku had during its construction. The temple was also designed to house a fighting force directly under Kunpetku's command, and their formation makes his ambition to stay on top throughout the cult's many power struggles obvious. The snake motif employed in the temple's design comes from an age when the cult worships many gods, one of which was a serpentine god of rebirth. One must not forget, however, that to the cult, rebirth only comes after destruction. Cursed Moonlit Woods Myths and legends about the moon can be found in every culture and every corner of the earth. Tales of the gods and beasts who dwell on its silvery surface. Stories of men driven mad by its light and folk tales of humans turning into beasts under the full moon. The list goes on. Moonlight at once illuminates the world and drains it of its color, and has sparked the imagination of people since time began. However, despite the unearthly beauty of a world lit by moonlight, one must never forget that in the shadows of the night, ravenous beasts prowl and malfested horrors stalk their prey. Holy Warriors Warriors blessed by the gods and tasked to carry out their divine will. Sensing the danger that the human wrought soul edge presented, the Greek god Hephaestus entrusted 24 devout men and women to destroy the cursed blade, and bestowed upon them divinely crafted arms to do so. The holy warriors each believe that they are the only one to be blessed with a task from the gods and work with unfaith, unfaltering faith to see it through. Unfortunately, the pages of history dedicated to these devout warriors remain blank. Holy Equipment The name for the weaponry and armor bestowed upon a mortal by Hephaestus, the Greek god of the forge. The weapon bears text and the shield bears mythological imagery. Hephaestus sometimes provides a block of sacred metal for a human blacksmith to forge new divine items as well. These arms 
are robust, elegant, and imbued with the power of the gods. A divine gift, indeed. Each item holds within it the blessing of Athena and Ares, which grant their wielder the physical and mental prowess of the most skilled of warriors, while the goddess of the wind, Anemoi, endows them with great speed. Finally, Hestia, the goddess of the of the hearth, bestows upon them a limited ability to cleanse evil. With all these divine gifts, a holy warrior has the power needed to deal swift divine justice to evil. The gods' favor is not given to just anybody, only to those holy warriors with iron wills, unwavering faith, and purity of heart and body. Surprisingly, there are some who receive the gods' favor even without hearing their voice, but no mortal knows whether that is because the gods are cap capricious in nature, or because it is part of some carefully cons considered plan. Snow-capped showdown. When a cold front comes in, the seas to the north freeze over, and blizzards block the mountain passes with snow. However, if blessed with a clear day, you may be treated to an indescribably beautiful view. After endless months of snowfall, the thick snow has been known to compact so much it forms glaciers. Great gorges appear like claw marks in the landscape, formed by the subtly shifting glaciers carving gouges into the bedrock. The snow fields provide little foot little footing or warmth, and many who brave their frozen passages never return home again. Though some warriors may wish to avoid this harsh place, only one who possesses the strength and fighting spirit to overcome these adverse conditions can be called a true warrior. Alright everybody, that is going to do it for this installment of the Vocal Library series. As always, I hope you enjoyed watching, and I will see you in the next one.